And were you born in Grinnell? No, I was not. I uh, I was not born in Grinnell. I was born, I went to school in Tama, South Tama for the first, I, I moved here when I was about 13, Grinnell. Um, I always lived in this house, but um, I opened and rolled to Grinnell. When I was okay. About 13, yeah. Okay. I, I graduated from here, obviously. So, um, so what got what got you to shift from Tama to Grinnell? Uh, that's a tough question house. for me to answer, but my parents would probably have a better answer for that. <laughs> I, I wasn't ready to leave. I mean, I didn't know what to expect. I had all my best friends growing up and stuff. So that was a weird transition for me. I actually begged my parents to stay because I didn't know a damn thing about Grinnell. But I figured out real quick that Grinnell is probably a good place to be, especially if you're if you're wanting to get a good you know education and stuff. That was probably I'm not gonna say a better idea, but I don't know. I felt like I felt like I I ended up ended up right where I should have been. I guess. Okay. Do you still feel like in between Tama and Grinnell? Like do you still have friends in Tama? Yeah, yeah. I got some of my best friends are are from Tama. Definitely. Um, I've always been going back and forth between Tama and Grinnell. I've always I got a lot of things going in Tama. I obviously went to school there, but um, yeah, I think there's a healthy balance between between Tama and Grinnell. Okay. I keep pointing that way because it's like Tama and Grinnell literally right there. I hear the sound of the wind behind me. Now I'm on my way to the world for now. And I don't ever want to leave it behind me. And no. So why, um, when you did My Town, why was it, why do you feel that it centers around Grinnell? Like, why did you, I guess with the video footage, mm -hmm. did you center it around Grinnell over Tama? That's a good question. Um, probably because a lot of the video footage is, like a lot of stuff I used, a lot of stuff I could have used. A lot of that was because I played sports in, in Grinnell and I, you know, um, I don't know, that's also another tough question. That's just kind of how it how it turned out, and I mean, I got I grew apart from a lot of people that I that I really knew in Tama for a while, and I know my life kind of just revolved around Grinnell. So okay, do you feel like a little bit of my town might might cater to Tama as well? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Okay. And obviously, Tama. I, I I always think Tama made me a lot of who I am too, because there was a lot in a lot of ways. Tama made me made me tougher because you know I grew up playing. Pop Warner football and in Tama, it was all tackle from first grade on. It was tackle football, so I mean, and it was rough too. Like those guys who were coaching me, like I probably shouldn't use any names, but but the guys who were coaching me, I'm still good friends with. Um, it was tough. It was it was you had to be tough if you wanted to be if you wanted to be a kid kid growing up in Tama because everybody played tackle football, everybody wrestled. It was that was just like the thing. <laughs> Before that guy came up the convenience store I didn't know him but he shook my hand he Said boy I heard your songs And those big dreams they might take on But me and this town we got your back And it sure feels good You start singing I didn't start singing till probably my junior year in high school and that was because my brother came home with a guitar one day and I was like and he was just playing like one or two chords I'm like wow that's pretty cool you know that sounds good and then I ended up uh, I don't remember it might have been Cameron my girlfriend now I think I told her I knew how to play guitar and I really didn't but I just thought it'd be really cool if I did. And she's like, wow, you should play that for me sometime. I was like, oh, crap, yeah, maybe. So now I actually had to learn guitar. So I started playing guitar because I told Cameron I knew how to play guitar when I actually didn't. So I was forced to actually learn guitar. Uh, and then I just started singing. I started writing my own music and stuff as soon as I, as soon as I learned guitar. I was really drawn to that. I've always been I've always been deep into like the songwriting aspect of, of artists. That's why 
I migrate towards like the Kit Moore, especially and Dirk Spelling, like those guys who write a lot of their own music. And you can feel the music that they write. You can tell tell that there's a lot of passion in it. So I just migrated towards the songwriting aspect. So as soon as I could play chords, I was writing songs, trying to sing them. At what point were you like, I'm gonna start performing? Well, uh, that was like a little weird for me because uh, there's my dog Ash. Wet too. Great. Somebody let you in. I was like the most, like, I don't know how to put it. Like, I was really shy and afraid of the spotlight for most most of my life until pretty much until I started playing guitar. And I would probably be one of the last, if you know me, like, people who really know me would say I'd be like the last person to ever, you know, pick up a guitar and play it in front of people and all that stuff. Like, I never thought I would do that. Like, if you had asked me like three years ago or two years ago or even probably a year ago at this point, I'd have been like, I don't know. But I decided once I started writing a bunch of songs and I was getting good feedback from like people close to me, I decided I might as well might as well see if I can that's what I love to do and I knew I knew that when I was done playing football I needed something. Like there was a hole to be filled. And I didn't know how to fill it really. So uh yeah, songwriting and guitar ended up being that thing, so I decided to book the show somewhere. It's just a little uh, little porch thing where I can just play for as long as I want, play as many songs as I want. And uh, got some good feedback, got a lot of positive feedback about my songs and gained a little confidence. I was like, all right, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give everything I got. So that's how it started, yeah. I trying to write a number one because that's what people want to hear necessarily like like you wouldn't a lot of the songs that I've written you wouldn't turn on and probably hear like on the radio so and when I say that I mean like if you turn on like kicks 1.1 to hear all the top 40 songs a lot of them are written to be a top 40 song so you know drinking hot girls all that stuff I don't have it like I, I can't really write songs like that I've tried and I've played them one or two times and been like, okay, it's kind of catchy, but I'm tired of playing it already. So if I write, I found out real quick, if I write, I gotta write something that has to do with me and my life and where I'm at and how I'm feeling or else I'm not, I'm not quite passionate enough about it to keep playing it. Grew up on the side of a Chasing girls to chase dreams Each one of us we got our thing Us we got each other we know we'll never fall As long as we got each other we know we'll never fall Let's talk about your first gig. What was your first gig? It's a place called Urban Pie in Cedar Falls. A little acoustic show. And that was last November. And uh, I don't know, there's not really much to be said about it. I just kind of showed up, had a couple of little speakers, plugged my guitar in, played probably 20 songs that I wrote, and uh, that was about it. Did you just play by yourself the first time? Um, I had a buddy, I met a buddy up there. His name was Adam Byrne. He's a phenomenal guitar player. And me and him hit it off really well. So he'd always play guitar and play, just shred the guitar, and I play rhythm. Okay. And he plays me, yeah. So that's kind of what we do. Cause I hear the sound of the wind behind me. Now I'm on my way to the world for now. And that's the wrong chord. 
Jake Simon band. So who's all in the band? Uh, Mitch Kingery and Caleb Weaver right now. Those are the only other two okay. guys right now. We got we've had a few guitar players here and there because Adam Byrne actually moved down to Dallas. Okay. Uh, in May after we graduated or he graduated. So we've been looking for a uh, for a good lead player to fill in full time, but we've had a few guys here and there. Um, Jonah Seymour actually played with us a couple weeks ago, and he just blew me away. He was so good. He's phenomenal. Probably the best drum player I've ever seen in my life. Okay. But he's also a guy who, he's got a lot of other um, commitments, so he can't really commit to us, which kind of sucks. But he'll be, you'll probably see him in a few shows here and there. With the band, how long have you been in college? I just it, um, went to college last fall. You just I'm, went to last fall. Yeah. Okay, so with the band starting around, because you started around November, mm -hmm. what's it like uh, being in and out of college, you know, like trying to handle that whilst trying to do music? Uh, that's a little bit of a struggle sometimes. See, we, uh, we played every weekend from basically the beginning of January to we were done with school and we even played i think we played every weekend from january almost until like the second week of may and that got a little tough i had to work a little harder in my classes because we we're playing every weekend one then we we're trying to practice and then i got obsessed with you know people reacting well to this song so i want to write more songs because it makes me excited when people you know bob their heads to a song that i wrote and after the show, they say, wow, that's a good song. You should play that again. Yeah, I'm coming here and play that here. That's just, I don't know, it's exciting. So, I mean, I started writing all the time. I was writing probably way more than I should have been because I fell behind a little bit with my classes. But um, that was a little bit of a struggle. We stayed really, really busy. <laughs> so far it probably have to be my town but just because it probably has the most meaning especially to a lot of different people okay and it's one that'll move me and move most people who listen to it i like to think what inspired that uh there's just a lot of emotions going on um, throughout the course of the about two three months back around in like november and december there's a lot of different things happening to me i don't go into any detail about it but there's just a lot of emotion decided to that was like I wrote probably like 10 of my best songs like in the span of like a month and they're all really really meaningful to me so I guess I guess I was just in an emotional place and I was inspired to write something that meant a lot to me and that's what popped out do you like do you have an album or anything yet or I got I was gonna release an EP um, like a month ago but Couple of the songs I recorded didn't quite turn out like I wanted them to, so we're gonna go back and strip them down. But I got four singles out now on all music platforms, and then we're gonna we're gonna re redo those songs, and then I don't know, probably record six or seven more, and then get an album out next summer. That'd be funny. Every time I get a chance to make you feel wanted, I try. So 
say, like, you know, you said junior year is when you started singing. Before that, what did you see yourself doing? I was convinced forever that I was going to you know, go play football in college. Okay. But the problem was I stopped growing about ninth grade. So, I mean, I was I mean, I mean, was a good football player, or I was decent at least, but I was like 5'9", you know, 165, 170. And my dreams were always, you know, I was going to go – I want. I don't know if I was good enough. Probably wasn't, but I was. I always wanted to go play at Iowa or some big place like that. And I figured out once I got a couple concussions and messed up my knee, I was like, all right, maybe football's not a good option. And I don't think I. I loved playing football. I really did. But I don't think I loved it enough to go play, just because I loved playing it, like at, like Central or something like that. Because I wanted to go to Central too, because that's where my brother went. Um, I just didn't really love it enough to go just play for fun like I always had I've always been like a really goal oriented person so if there's no like really next goal for me like my goal was always you know make varsity and then it was get a scholarship to play football in college and then if I could play somewhere big like you and I or Iowa or something like that then work my way up to varsity on that and then you know go to the NFL or something like that but that started to be an unrealistic goal for me and once that dream kind of ended I realized that would probably never be an option. So there was like nothing. I didn't know what was like next for me because I've always been like a really like a really big dreamer. And when there's no dream to chase, you kind of just lost. And that's where I was. You got me. Of goals do you see now from where you're at in in singing? Um, I would say goals for me would just be like I want to be able to see myself and look back and see how the shows can get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Because I like playing acoustic shows where you just hang out and you know talk and interact with people and sing a bunch of songs play acoustic but I love playing uh, the big shows where you got electric guitars full drum set and you got a bunch of people dancing those are even more fun but the problem is when you're it's not a problem but it's just part of the process when you're first starting you're young you go to all these places and nobody really knows who you are so you show up in a lot of places especially for someone like me who likes to play a lot of their own music you just kind of sometimes you got to deal with empty empty houses and you got to deal with people not really listening and all that stuff so a goal for me is to pick up people you got to pick up fans just a few everywhere you go that way next time you come they come back maybe they bring a couple friends so and I've honestly seen it already like when we first started playing in January we play some of the same places I you know I met so-and-so here the first time and I got a Facebook message that says oh we're coming back we're bringing this person that's just cool to me and I just want to I don't know I want to see it progress you know as we go I want to see, you know, a crowd grow for me rather than just a venue. Every time I get a chance to make you feel wanted, I try to grab your hand to take off and run in. Sometimes it's hard to see when you're sitting in next to me, yeah. You're here, then you're gone again. Guess the man. What was your best show so far like what was the most fun for you most fun show we've had not a very big venue but just the most fun and upbeat um, venue was this is probably going to catch people by surprise but screaming eagle on waterloo screaming eagle on waterloo we had i don't even know it was full band and the dance floor was packed and everybody was singing pretty much every song and that's the best for me because you run into problems too when you're, especially when you're new like us, you don't want to play huge venues because they feel really empty if there's not a lot of people there. We play smaller ones and there's probably the same amount of people, feels like there's a lot of people. And the energy is just really high. 
So Screaming Eagle, I would say, would be my favorite because everybody is getting so into it and everybody's just singing along. That's my favorite part about music, too, is you can show up to some place and if you let it, you know, you can get away from all the stupid crap in life that drags you down. You can get away from it for a couple hours and just forget about everything. Just have fun. I think everybody there is having fun right now. Uh, do you have, like, a list of shows coming up or anything or... Uh, usually my Facebook page is pretty up to date. Okay. But I've been a little bit slack on that because you know I've been busy working and I'm doing all kinds of stuff. But uh, I'm, I meant to get on that. I, I got we got like four or five shows in the next few weekends, but I only got a couple of them listed on Facebook. Okay. So I'll probably get on that. But uh, just keep an eye out on Facebook if, if people we're gonna, want to see where you're playing. Um, we're getting a website built right now too. Okay. So we'll have all that stuff on the website. Too. Well, awesome. Okay. Yeah. been a long while now just being here Pull up to your place, little attitude You hop out the door and say just stay in the door Say you were to want to have an impact someday um, on Grinnell or even Tama, anywhere. Yeah. What, what impact do you want to have on the community? Maybe the community of Iowa. Um, I want to be the person that I don't know. I really want to be somebody who people can look at and, and think. I don't know. I want people to see me as myself. You know, I'm. I like to think I'm pretty down to earth, but I want I want people to, especially in my situation where I was so scared of the spotlight my whole life and so uncomfortable with everything and self conscious about everything. To, I need people to know that most people's opinions don't really matter. The day you stop caring what other people think about you, and you stop caring about other people's opinions, is the day you'll find that, I don't know, you'll find happiness that way, I think. And I, I definitely have, I think. So I guess my impact would be, um, be proud of yourself, be proud of who you are and where you come from, and don't care what other people think about you. Every time I get a chance to make you feel wanted I try to grab your hand but you take off and run Sometimes it's hard to see that you love about Grinnell? I really love the sense of community in Grinnell, especially. Um, it's definitely a place that I think most people would would want to come and like start a family and stuff. It's just a, it's a really welcoming community. It's a nice community. It's Here's, here's a little story. Um, I first moved to Grinnell, I think, seventh grade. And I, I remember just like, wanting to move back to Tama so bad just because I was stubborn and you know all that stuff and then about a year and a half went by and all of a sudden I wasn't the new kid anymore and I remember thinking this is probably this is exactly where I want to be right now like I wouldn't wouldn't trade it for the world so I don't know I felt welcome I felt, felt like I'm a part of the community and I just can't say enough about the community it's so nice and welcoming you just drive around and you feel you feel like you're at home all the time that's probably what I'd say about, about Cornell. It's a good place to go. All right. Anything else you want to say real quick? Or... Thanks for having me. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the Jake Simon video as much as I did. Please check out his page and all the links in the description down below. I'm going to link it to where if you want, you can actually purchase his music on any of the musical platforms. On top of that, guys, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, share this with friends, and let us know... What is your favorite Jake Simon song?